All right, so the last thing I want to show you is solving an equation using the scientific calculator. Now, obviously on the test, I'm going to make you show me work and steps to justify what you did because this is the important part, the communication of how exactly you get there. But sometimes it's really nice to know what the right answer is or to check your work by seeing what the right answer is, right? So let's just say we were solving this question, which is straight off of the um, last knowledge check we had in 92. If I want to solve this, you'll notice that we had expression evaluator here. And then we have this thing, we have a number solver, we have a polynomial solver, and we have a system solver. We just want to solve something that has numbers in it. So we're going to use this numeric solver. So if you press second and then the sign button, it'll bring up this solver. And what it should look like in your calculator, if you've never used it before, for this, is it'll have a box is equal to a box. And we just need to type in this equation exactly how it appears. So negative 2 parentheses x plus 7 and parentheses 23. So now my calculator looks exactly like the problem I want to solve. If I press enter, the one thing is your calculator wants to know where to start looking. So if you have a guess of what the right answer is, this is where you'd put your guess. So I'm sitting there going, okay, well, I already have a negative. So whatever this is times that has to be positive. So this is going to be a negative number. So let me just guess like negative 10. It doesn't matter. This will matter more on questions that have um, problem children, like problems that happen. Here, there's no problems because I can plug in anything for x. It's just going to give me out a wrong answer. And it might take it a little longer to find the right answer if I choose a bad number for x. Um, but it really doesn't matter. So it says, let's solve for x then. So it says the solution is that x is equal to negative 18.5. Perfection. Quit. So I wonder if it actually replaced my x. Yep, so now it says x is 18.5 because that's what I was solving for. I could even turn that into a fraction so that I'm a very happy teacher. Hell, I could even go and change that into a mixed number if I really want to show off. I've got all of the different possible ways to write that answer. So anyways, that is your number solver. So you can use that to check your work on anything. What I really recommend doing, since you're going to have to show your work anyways, is to take this, solve it the traditional ways that we've talked about in class, right, so we're going to add that, we get negative 2x is equal to 37, get rid of that negative 2 by dividing it because it was multiplied, is that you will probably want to just use your calculator to check your work. So when you're using your calculator to check your work, you're just going to go back to here. And these two sides should equal each other, right? So I'm going to take negative 2. I'm going to plug in negative 37 over 2, which was my solution, right? Plus 7. That is the left side of this equation, replacing x with what we said x was equal to. What should happen if I press equals is I should get the right side of this. I should get 23. Perfect. If there were variables on both sides of my equation, I would need to plug in once on the left, plug in once on the right, and then verify that the numbers that it gave out were the same. So that's how you can help a lot with the um, equations using the calculator. Remember, the other thing you can do with the equations using the calculator is you can use it to help you with this simple math. If you're somebody who has some mistakes, so you they go, okay, negative 2 times 7. Oh, that's negative 14. That'll keep you from making simple mistakes. Even doing the 23 plus 14 in your calculator, there's nothing wrong with doing each of these pieces within your calculator. So uh, that's the calculator for solving equations.